Tonight, it is my great honor to present this year's Mary McDowell Arts Advocacy Award to renowned visual artist, two-time McDowell Fellow, and founder of Anonymous Was a Woman, Susan Unterberg. Susan's work, Susan's work is represented in several major public collections at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, I've heard of it, uh, the Museum of Modern Art, the Jewish Museum, and more. But over the past decade, just 11% of all acquisitions and 14% of exhibitions at 26 prominent American museums were of work by women. shocking. Susan's observation of these inequities inspired her to try to change the status quo and open some doors for future generations. So in 1996, when the National Endowment for the Arts ended grants for individuals, Susan created Anonymous Was a Woman, providing unrestricted grants to women identifying artists over the age of 40, yay Susan, and for more than 20 years, she kept her identity as its primary funder a secret. To date, almost $7 million has been awarded to 265 individual artists. And in, in 2018, Susan revealed her identity so she could, as the New York Times wrote, demonstrate the importance of women supporting women and try to inspire other philanthropists to do the same. I've heard it said that every time an old woman dies, a library disappears. <laughs> Susan works to grow and preserve those libraries of art and wisdom for us here and now and for the future. She has said, in essence, it is unacceptable that those libraries disappear. Thank you, Susan, for the great work of Anonymous Was a Woman. It is now my privilege to present the 2022 Marion McDowell Arts Advocacy Award to artist and activist Susan Unterberg. Thank you all. Oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, so first of all, thank you so much for McDowell for such a meaningful honor and to Roseanne Cash for your amazing introduction. In accepting this award, I would like to share this honor with all of the amazing artists who have received an Anonymous Was a Woman Award so many of whom have also attended McDowell. It is so special to see so many of you here tonight. 28 years ago, when Anonymous Was a Woman was barely an idea, I could not have predicted that I'd be standing in front of such a crowd accepting this wonderful award, partly because then I didn't yet, I didn't yet know the longevity and impact Anonymous would have. After 27 years and 265 awardees, and another is going to be awarded on Friday, uh, another 15 actually, and partly because I never expected that I wouldn't be anonymous. I have a great love of artist residencies and am fortunate to have attended McDowell twice. Getting to spend time and share meals and ideas with other artists is an important way to form community and lasting friendships. 
and the time and space given to my own work has been transformative. For those of you who have attended McDowell, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't, imagine being in an idyllic tiny town, really tiny, given permission to leave behind life's daily routines and stresses in order to focus just on what you love to do with other people who have been given that same gift. Recognizing how important and generative it is to have both individual support and be in the company of other artists was the profound vision that Marion McDowell had in creating a space like McDowell and supporting it into the future. It is an active and direct intervention which supports artists in their work. Being at residencies also helped me understand firsthand sig the significance and need for direct support. Over and over again, I heard from other fellows, especially women mid-career, about how they were overlooked in the art world and wished for both more material support and recognition. These conversations with new friends would guide me as I created Anonymous Was a Woman. And as you've just heard, in 1994, the NEA stopped giving individual artist grants. And in the following couple of years, I began dreaming alongside my good friend, the legendary founder of the new museum, Marsha Tucker, about the possibility of setting up my own individual artist grants, this time for under-recognized mid-career women artists. From the beginning, Thank you. From the beginning, I wanted this award to be for and about artists rather than about me as a philanthropist. And I never really thought of myself as a philanthropist until now. Uh, <laughs> so I insisted on maintaining my anonymity. Also, I'm a pretty shy and private person. Marcia had the institutional clout, political know-how, and charm to get this off the ground. Handwriting notes to early nominators emphasizing the potential significance of this kind of award, especially in creating communities of direct support by and for women. Since 1996, the award itself has stayed mostly the same. In 2018, however, I decided to go public with my identity realizing that I could also be effective by both being a public advocate and creating new kinds of direct support as needs for them arise. In the early weeks of the COVID crisis, Anonymous partnered with NIFA, which is the New York Foundation for the Arts, to issue small need-based grants to women artists impacted by lost income due to the shutdowns. And I think we were one of the first organizations to do such a thing. This year, Anonymous established an environmental art grant, also run with NIFA, supporting women-led environmental art projects that inspire thought, action, and ethical engagement with regard to our current ecological crises. An unexpected effect of going public was connecting with other people who also wanted to support the award, and in some cases wanted information how to set up their own forms of direct support to artists. We welcome these conversations and the additional support which has allowed us to make several more grants per year. Tonight is about McDowell. As Jacqueline said, give them money. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if we didn't love McDowell but it is worth mentioning that um, in the first year of the environmental art grant, we got over 900 applications and were only able to support 14 projects. A clear indication of how much enthusiasm artists are bringing to environmental justice and how much support is still needed to this end. For me, the most meaningful connection between Marion McDowell's advocacy and my own is the conviction that direct support 
is the most effective way to impact an artist's life and work for the better. Thank you for recognizing my part in this shared purpose. Thank you again. Oh, wow. Thank you, Roseanne. That's beautiful. Thank you, thank you.